Welcome back everyone to part 10 of the FPS Pawn series. Where in the last episode we added a, a third weapon. In this episode we're going to be adding a melee weapon, like a knife melee weapon slot, sort of similar to, uh, to how you'd use it in Counter-Strike. And I'd like to give a massive, massive shout out to Neck on Discord for making this truly gorgeous knife model and kindly donating it to the channel, to the video, so that we can, we can use it here. Oh, and also he went on and made a gold AK skin, <laughs> which looks like this. Uh, I'll also include the files for this in the in the download link below. So if you've already downloaded it, or if you haven't downloaded it yet, just look down in the description, and you'll be able to pick up all the assets that are used for these videos, including all the animations for the for the knife that we got so far. So without further ado, let's just go ahead, uh, head to our little blueprints folder here, and let's duplicate. We'll duplicate the Glock for our knife. So we'll call this one weapon underscore knife, and then just open it up. So there's a lot here that we're not going to need going forward. So let's just delete our unequip event. We'll also delete reloading. We're not going to need that. And in our construction script, we'll just delete all of these here. We'll just leave the name and the variable mode Boolean. So we'll plug that in and make sure we set it to none because the none is going to be our uh, knife slot. So we'll save that, head back to the event graph and we'll start uh, building out our actual knife attack uh, blueprint here so because it's a knife has no ammo we'll delete this branch at the front here we're not going to need the ammo check function at all i don't think uh we can delete yep we can delete all of that so back in the event graph we'll just delete a little function here we'll delete it in the left as well and what else do we need so we'll keep our functions here we'll just have to change them up a little bit we're going to lose the sound we'll lose the muzzle flash we'll also delete that from the side over here and our aim down sight boolean, we're no longer going to need to call. But we'll make ourselves a fresh boolean over here on the left, call it cooldown. It'll be a boolean, and this will be related to the amount of time that we spend between uh, knife blows. So let's go ahead and fire here into a branch, and we'll call our cooldown variable, cooldown boolean, which by default will be uh, false. And then when our cooldown is false, we'll just alt drag, get a set set our cooldown to true so that we are in our cooldown phase then out of this uh boolean here let's get a c a uh what am i saying a sequence <laughs> there we go and we'll add a third pin to this because what we need to do is first of all uh pick a montage to play when we uh when we swing the knife when we use it then we'll call our line trace and our spawn decal and then we'll have our delay here before we set our cooldown back to false so in fact we'll do that one first so we'll get ourselves a re-triggerable delay and then uh, duplicate our set node here and set our cooldown to false. This will be the last thing we do in our sequence. The second thing we'll do is all of our line tracing. And the first thing we'll do is set ourselves a montage. And I've got to make a couple of different montages for, uh, for the sake of our knife, a couple of different attacks. So we want to pick one of, those, uh, one of those knife swings randomly before we do the rest of our sequence. So let's just right click, we'll get a switch, a switch on int, uh, which will be down the bottom here. There we go. And out of this integer, let's get a random random integer in range. And that range will be from zero to two because we have three montages to play and our first index is at zero. So zero, one, and two. Let's add those pins to our switch. Make sure we have some montage nodes here and then we'll just hook all of these up, zero, one, and two. And plug in our skeletal mesh component. And the montages to play, if we head back over to our animations folder here, We'll have the animations, they'll be called, here we go, knife attack 01, 02, and 03. So let's select all three of those, we'll right click, create and in montages. And then let's open them up. There we go. Because we need to change the blend in and out uh, times similar to we did with the fire animation of the gun. So we'll set these to 0 0.1. And here we go. This is so that less time is spent blending into the animation and out of the animation so that they can play as quickly and as smoothly as possible. So we'll hit save on all those. Once we set the blend time and the blend out time to 0 0.1, we'll be able to call them here in our weapon. So we want, oh, can't spell. So we want, what am I doing? Here we go, knife attack one. We want knife attack two. And obviously knife attack three. There we go. And we'll plug this into our first, uh, or to our switch up the top here. All right. Now we can, uh, we're going to be changing a few things in our line tracing and in our, our spawn decal tracer function, but we'll keep them both and just start with the line trace. So it's all going to be pretty similar. Let's grab our aim offset variable here, set it, alt, set it to all zeros 
and our range here we want to set that down to somewhere about 175 because obviously it's not a long range gun it's a <laughs> it's a knife and uh what else we're we gonna have to lose here let's get rid of our gunshot and yeah we'll just get rid of all of that and we'll just start from here so after our line trace we'll come into a branch there we go and this is so that we can use this boolean here this return value boolean to check whether we actually got a hit result and if we did we can move forward if we didn't then nothing's been hit we don't have to do anything for any, anything more so if that's true we'll go into this return node and we want to send out our two vector outputs here let's go with uh yeah impact point and impact normal will be the two values that we need so our impact point comes out of the break just like before and our impact normal comes out of the impact normal all right so compile that and we're ready to move on to the uh the spawn decal and tracer so the first thing we'll do is just delete this uh spawn transform here um vector we only need two vectors going in that was the impact point and remember it was the other one was the impact normal and then we can go ahead and change up our uh, spawn decal here so i guess what we need first is a knife decal i've gone and included some textures here to use for this the knife decal mask and the knife decal uh, texture here and start by just simply duplicating the bullet decal material because it's exactly the same thing i've just changed the knife decals to knife decal and uh, knife decal m and then we need to make a blueprint out of it so just similar to the bullet decal i've just duplicated it made uh all this duplicate it now uh call it <laughs> call it knife decal underscore bp and it's going to work in exactly the same way we don't, we don't need to make any changes to it here in the actual blueprint so now that we have that we can call it in our uh in our weapon here so the the blueprint we want here in this spawn actor is the one we just made the, the one we just made the knife decal underscore bp and it's from there that we'll be doing all sorts of different uh, transforms stuff. We can get rid of these nodes. We won't need to check this. We're not spawning a tracer. So all of that can go. This make transform can go. And that should be it. We should be ready. So our impact point is also going to be where uh, the where the decal is spawned. Our rotation though is going to be different. Uh, so let's disconnect that. Um, we'll call in our first person camera here because we need our rotation. And we'll also need from our camera the forward vector. So we'll just get forward vector. And let's split this rotation here. So we have access to the variables within the uh, within our rotation vector. And we'll also split this one here in the spawn actor. So what I'm uh, what I'm doing here is very similar to how I did it with the spray paint uh, decals back in my spray paint video. Uh, also a feature from Counter-Strike too. But it's uh, I'm pretty much just gonna recreate that and uh, that'll be how we'll correct the size and the angle of the decals when we put them onto a surface. And this will also help in your guns as well, making sure the bullet decals actually appear correctly, depending on uh, what surface they're on. So that's why we've gone and we've gone and got the the normal of our impact as well as the as well as just the position where it's where it's hit. And from this impact normal here, we'll do this first. Let's uh, get an equal. We get an equal vector, and check whether Z is one point zero. So if it hits a, a horizontal or a vertical surface, that's basically what this uh, what this equals is going to return. So then we'll grab ourselves a branch. We'll use the result of this as the condition and just drag this over and then duplicate our spawn actor and plug one into true and one into false. So this way we're spawning, uh, we're spawning a decal with a different transform based on whether they're on a flat surface or on a uh, vertical surface. And because I've already got this all on record in my spray paint video and to save time experimenting, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, input these numbers here. So our true result spawn actor, the transform rotation is going to be minus 90 in the X, or rather in the in the roll. Uh, it's going to be positive 90 in the pitch, and our Z value is going to be the result of our rotation here. Well, the rotation of our forward vector. So from the forward vector, let's get our rotation from X vector, which converts our vector here into a rotator. Just split that structure pin and use the Z value. As our rotation in Z. Next, let's add uh, add 90 to our return value from our weld rotation here, our X, and use this as the transform in our X for our false result. Our positive result is going to be the impact uh, the impact normal. So let's get the impact normal down here, and uh, we need the rotation from X vector from our uh, from our impact normal. 
This will make the Y value here, and it will also make the Z value once we add 180 to correct the way that the decal faces. So with that done, the last thing is to check the scale to make sure the scale of the decal fits. Uh, we'll just type in 0 0.1 in the X, 0 0.08 and 0 0.08 in the Y and Z. The 0 0.1 will act as the thickness of the decal. I'm just giving it a little bit so we get like a little bit more depth with the way our decals appear. And the 0 0.08 is just to correct the size. Because by default it will appear quite big. So uh, do the same thing in our bottom one, that's 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.08 and 0 0.08. And we also have to put in our location here, which will be the uh, impact point. Next, we've got our location set. And uh, we're pretty much done here. So let's just hook this back up. Hit compile. We'll save it. Oh, something's thrown. Uh, yes, we got this uh, to correct here. That should fix now. All right. And our knife is ready to be used. Now, in order to implement our knife, let's just open up our FPS pawn. We have to change every occurrence of our original uh, weapon base blueprint to the to our new knife uh, weapon. We can delete this begin play now because the hands are going to be visible all the time. And the defaults of our primary weapon and our secondary weapon, let's make the default class the weapon underscore knife for both primary and secondary. There we go. We'll compile that. And we have to change some of the things here in some of our... Uh, like some of our actions, like in drop weapon, we have to open up our macro and change this set child actor class here from weapon from weapon base uh, to our knife. We'll compile that, make sure it works. And we can also delete this uh, set, set visibility here since our hands are gonna be visible all the time. Then there's uh, weapon switching, which is fairly straightforward. Let's change these uh, weapon base references here to weapon knife. There we go, that's our start. And we'll also um, make, a, make a little bit of extra functionality here. So let's make ourselves a new Boolean. Uh, let's call it knife active. Uh, there we go, if I could spell. <laughs> there it is. And let's add that to our one and our two. So by default, it's going to be uh, false, that's fine. So let's just get two sets and make sure we keep it set to false whenever we hit one or two. Where are we? There we go. And then let's get the three key to be our knife selection key. From here, uh, let's get another alt drag from, not from our uh, knife active, set it to true because now our knife is active. Then uh, we'll grab our weapon equipped and a switch on this weapon so that we can switch whether we are primary or secondary back to the knife. Simple enough. And then just gets for our primary and our secondary weapon set for our primary and our secondary weapon. There we go, hook these up. This is so that no matter which key we pressed, we can store what we had in that slot into the appropriate uh, structure here, to the appropriate variable. So by dropping the knife, we're not gonna also, you know, lose our gun when we go back to the knife. Hope that, uh, hope that makes sense. And that's pretty much all we have to do, except for, oh, let's grab our gun and set the child actor class. And we wanna set it to our knife. There we go, hook this up, and there we go. Now we have a three key that will switch to our knife no matter which weapon we're using. And remember our weapon, you know, put it back in its slot for, for until we, we pull it back out. And one of the last things that we're going to have to do is just change up our animation blueprint so that we can use the, use the knife properly. The first thing that we'll do here is just add a, an element for none to our uh, blend pose by weapon list, because this will be where we put our knife in. And that will be done by duplicating, we'll duplicate one of our state machines here and just plugging it directly into, uh, into the none pose because there's no ADS to consider. We don't have to do this, this check here. We need the one state machine. So we'll just rename it knife loco. And then all we have to do is change our animations. So the first one is knife, uh, knife idle, then knife jump start. Jump loop. Jump end. And finally for running. There it is, pretty painless. And we're back at the animation graph. So this should just set our, uh, set our animations to 
the knife whenever we're in um whenever we have this none in the weapon name but that means we also have to edit our uh function a bit our get weapon name function here so let's just uh duplicate one of these set nodes here we'll just add one for uh for none and this will be set to none so now we have one for every single entry in our enum and then we have to make sure that we got our knife active in the player so that we can switch the knife uh, in our animation blueprint based off this boolean so from our casted character uh, we'll just get our knife active make a little bit of space here get ourselves a branch what if i can grab oh i can grab all four that's very cool <laughs> i didn't know that so we'll check our uh, check our branch here check our knife active get another one of these set nodes and set our weapon name to none if the knife active is true and if it's not then we're back here at uh, at false so save that and we are nearly ready to test the last thing to do is to change our pickups our weapon pickups here instead of checking for weapon base since we're never going to be using that in the player we need to check for weapon underscore knife so do this in your clock uh we'll do it in the mp5 next weapon knife compile and finally the ak uh whoop, not there there we go weapon knife done and now we're ready to test so this is file and save all before we go and our knife is a glock <laughs> that's that's new oh you know what i think it is yeah let's go to our go to our knife blueprint here our knife weapon and yeah we haven't changed the the primary weapon here to our knife yet so get knife rigged there we go i'll have to change the, the material as well and uh, knife mat instance there it is looking good compile save now let's hit go and there we have our we have our knife and it's going to play a random one of three attacks uh whenever we whenever we left click and if we go up to a wall uh it's still spawning the bullet decal i've got to switch that to so back in our where is it in our weapon in the spawn decal knife decal oh that's right we forgot to set that decal too so back in our uh back in our blueprints um where am i looking knife decal there it is we have to change our decal to the knife one that we made uh knife decal map there we go okay that should have ironed out all of the problems with it so far there we go so our knife is working fine and up to a wall there we go it's going to leave it's going to leave the these nice knife marks there and they'll be correctly oriented in the ground as well all right uh let's test out the guns so we'll pick up a glock here we can throw it down we're back to the knife grab ak okay it all seems to be working fine so uh this was how to make a melee weapon in uh in unreal engine pretty similar to how we did with the uh with the other weapons like with the with the line tracing and such but done it in a different way so that we can we can pick up weapons we can throw them down we'll get my ak here we can always switch back to the knife and do some melee damage if you wanted to and it's not going to change based on you know uh any you know weirdness so it's all going to be pretty solid uh, we can keep switching weapons all we want and yeah our knife uh our knife works really really well so massive shout out to neck for providing the model and uh yeah i mean it just looks looks so good in engine and also the the gold ak that's a nice touch i really really quite enjoy that so thanks for watching this far guys i hope you've all got something out of it remember if you run into any problems the most likely culprit is that there's a like a weapon base blueprint reference somewhere around here like in the drop weapon here make sure that when we set our, our weapon back to back to no weapon our name is at none and our weapon class is at knife same goes with the uh with the weapon switching make sure that we're checking for the knife and not the uh you know not the ak or the glock or the or the weapon base and uh you should uh you should be fine so thanks again and uh thanks again to neck for the great skins and the great model and i'll catch you guys in the next one